Welcome to Game Night Live. WJBF Sports presents local high school football live in your living room each Friday night. Game Night Live is powered by McDonald's. I'm loving it. And now, your hosts, John Hart and Ashley Brown. And welcome in everyone, a gorgeous night for football. We are in Columbia County for WJVF Game Night Live. Big rivalry matchup uh, between heated rivals, Lakeside coming into town. They're two and two. They're taking on their uh, county foe, Evans, who is two and three on the season. Uh, John Hart not with us tonight, joining me, uh, handling color analyst duties and stats tonight. We've got Nathan Edwards. Nathan. This is a big-time rivalry. I know you know a lot about it. I do, too. What do you think? Absolutely. We've both been a part of it when we were in school and now when we're covering games. This is one of the biggest robberies in the area. Uh, it definitely goes back to when they used to share a field here uh, together. Uh, Lakeside's had had a had three-year run where Evans didn't score a point for three years from 20, 2009 to 2011. That was kind of the golden years of the robbery for Lakeside, but Evans fans will quickly point out they still own the rivalry 2010-1. Yeah, 20 wins, 10 losses, and one tie in that all-time series. And at one point, this was the Max Preps national rivalry, uh, rivalry game of the week. So got a lot of press, a lot of attention. The captains are just about set to go out to the field for the coin toss. And there you see big number 75 for Evans. He is a mountain, six foot seven, 300 pounds. Mason Short, he is a sophomore, but he's already committed to Alabama. And to his left, another D1 prospect, running back Rayshon King, who has already got offers from schools in the MAC like Miami of Ohio. So we should have a good one tonight uh, between Lakeside and Evans. Let's get our uh, keys to the game for you, starting with Lakeside. For them, I think they've got to win the defense and special teams battle. They struggle with that against North Augusta, and they've got to contain the running of Rayshon King. For Evans, do not let Michael Grissom hurt you. He uh, break containment. Absolutely, he accounts for 65% of all of Lakeside's offense runs through Michael Grissom. And a balanced attack for Evans is definitely what they need. So let's go down to the field for the coin toss. I care less you got Evans. All right, fellas, here we go. Check this out, Mr. Billman, Mr. Billman, Mr. Billman, Mr. Billman. This is Mr. Ross, I'm fired tonight. Guys, listen up. You're chosen captain for a reason. That's to control your teams. White, you talk to white. Black, you talk to black. You're going to respect the game tonight. I'll tell you that, all right? Do not make us handle it. You handle it. Everybody got it, right? All right, Evans, you're the home team. Lakeside, you're the visiting team. I got a coin here. I got the number five on the front is the heads. The badges are tails. The five is the heads. The badges are tails. Tell them what you call. Tails, tails. It's tails. You want the ball. Which way you want to kick? All right, put your backs over there, put your backs over here. Lakeside won the toss, they want the rock. Evans will kick from the clock. Hey guys, let's do it. So there you go, Lakeside wins the toss and they want the football. They're not deferring to the second half, which is a little different these days. Don't see that very much. You don't, don't see that. All right, two teams getting ready. We will have a look at the coaches and kickoff of Game Night Live right after this timeout. It's fall, y'all, and time for Busby's Heating and Air's Free for Fall. For a limited time, when you purchase a complete carrier heating and cooling system, receive your choice of a Yeti cooler, a flat screen TV, or a Blackstone griddle, free. Busby's free for fall won't last long, so call us today to get your high efficiency carrier heating and cooling system. Busby's, trusted since 1945. Carrier, turn to the experts. Child trafficking in our schools. It's something we don't talk about every day, and unfortunately we have to have those conversations because it's out there. What are local schools doing to identify at-risk children and what's being done to protect them? Continuing to increase that awareness, I think, is the only hope that we have. We have a lot that we're not reaching. Adults need to be willing to step up. A News Channel 6 special report, hidden in plain sight, Tuesday on Good Morning Augusta. And we are back at John Pierce Blanchard Stadium on the campus of Evans High School as you see the Knights come onto the field. 
trying to knock off their rivals from Lakeside and stay undefeated in region play. Last week, Evans knocked off Grovetown 29-7. And there's the head coach of the Evans Knights, Barrett Davis. Let's take a look at the coaches, starting with Steve Hibbets in his 10th year at Lakeside, 38-59, 52-88 overall. He was the head coach at Westside prior to coming to Lakeside. He was also the Border Bowl coach, Border Bowl 11, and he's a grad of Silver Bluff. For Barrett Davis, third season at Evans, 36-24. He was a head coach before that at Southeast Bullock. Uh, He was a uh, Lakeside student and a Harlem grad. And those are your coaches for tonight's matchup. Yeah, if you've got any hope of getting a home playoff game in this region, you've got to win this football game tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Big, big matchup. Again, Evans knocking off Grovetown relatively easily last week. And here's one of Evans' top players, Tyler Wallace, one of the premier kickers in the area, starting to get some Division I looks. Got a visit coming up to Tennessee. Auburn's taking a look at him. And, of course, another touchback for touchback Tyler as they call him here at Evans High School. Yeah, it's nice when you kick off and kick it through the uprights. Yeah, I talked to Coach Davis last night on the radio side, and that's what he said. This is a huge luxury having Tyler Wallace as his kickoff man and as the kicker for Evans. With the, He's kicked a couple of pri- over 30 yards. He's looked yeah. been great on PATs. He's even punted well for yeah. them. We've seen it so much this year. If you don't have a kicker, it is a oh, huge, yeah. huge disadvantage. disadvantage. Huge disadvantage. So let's see what Lakeside, they wanted the football. And their guy is Mikael Grissom, their talented quarterback. As you heard Nathan in the pregame, he accounts for 65% of the team's offense. He's going to pitch it off this time, and it's going to be a nice pickup, about five yards on first down. Five yards on the carry. It's going to be second and five, right at the 25-yard line. And number three on the carry for Lakeside. There you see the offense for the Panthers. Caleb Jackson carried it that time. Keep an eye on Ty Jones, the wide receiver. He wears number five, and he is slippery, very fast. Coach Hibbett said one of the quickest players. He's, matter of fact, he said the quickest player he's ever coached. And Grissom going to fake the handoff. Oh, and a little misdirection here. Kind of a slow developing play, odd looking behind the line of scrimmage. And Evans is going to stuff that one in for a big loss. Yeah, I don't think that's exactly how they drew that one up. A little bit of confusion, like they were trying to go to the shovel back up, kind of up in the middle of the offense, kind of seen with like the Aaron Hernandez at Florida type. Yeah. The big guy on the Evans defense is Jacob Jackson, number eight, a talented linebacker. Rayshon King, who pulls double duty as a running back and linebacker. Those are kind of the two key guys for this Evans defense. There's a look at Jackson. He will hit you. Lakeside in a third down. They gave uh, it forward progress. They're going to be third about seven. And they're going to throw it. It's a high throw. It is caught, though. And that's going to be a first down. I believe that was Ty Jones, the speedster. He can fly. And I tell you, don't let the size fool you. He is an outstanding point guard on the basketball floor. He has started since his freshman year. He was at Greenbrier prior to this season, transferred over to Lakeside. You're seeing that more and more, that transfer trickling down from college into high school. Yeah, we talked pregame about them being creative with the ways they got on the ball. We saw yeah. just a lot of screen and swing passes last time we had them. And Grissom at quarterback looked good on that throw. A little high, but not bad. And another pass. Now, this is a player I'm real excited to watch tonight, Jack Thexton. He is a big, strong tight end, can block, can run, can catch. They will definitely look to get him the ball across the middle. He looked very good in the matchup we saw against North Augusta, and he picks up eight there on the pass. And Coach Hibbets, uh, Nathan, said that Grissom is getting better and better every game at quarterback. And you saw on these two passes looking good, two for two to start the night. And that's all you can ask for. He's only a junior as well. Yeah. Like we talked about Evangelista at Harlem. Look how much yeah. he jump he made from his junior to senior year. On a nice little jump step, and it's going to be a pickup of a first down. And that was B.J. Grissom. That is the quarterback's brother. And he is a leading tackler on the defense and also a very good running back. It's a life link of Georgia first down for the Panthers. Did you see him in all white tonight? I think there's ever any ar- arguments at home. You need me to get me the ball one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, Mikel Grissom leading this Lakeside offense to a couple of quick first downs. They're up near midfield. They're going to throw it again. He's in trouble. And he makes a man miss, but he is brought down. Great job staying with the tackle. 
And I think that was number 63 for the Knights who got in there. That is Jack Harrington. And Harrington missed him initially but stayed with the play and was able to bring him down from behind. So good job by the undersized defensive lineman there. Very quick. He beats the guys up front with his quickness and was able to get the sack there. So they lose about six on that one. So Lakeside. Second and long. Here's Ty Jones on the end of round. Jones with the speed. He's going to get back across the original line of scrimmage and actually get about three or four after that. So it will set Lakeside up with a – see where they spot him. And it's going to be third down and about seven, maybe eight. So third and about seven and a half. And you hear – the dulcet tones of Scott Scadden in the background. He is the longtime PA man here at Evans. And they're going to throw it. Grissom in trouble. Grissom just going to throw it up for grabs out of bounds. He avoids the sack, but it's going to be fourth down. And Nathan Evans gave up a couple of first downs, but that pressure on the quarterback, Jack Harrington leading the way, forces a punt. Yeah, they blitzed a couple of times and were able to get home, one with the sack, one with the pressure there. Uh, to be able to get defense off the field. And in, barring a fake here or something wild, we might see the first chance to take a look at the Evans offense. As Lakeside's going to punt away. Low snap, good job by the punter to handle that. It's going to be a short punt, but it takes a great Lakeside bounce. Oh, did he touch that ball? Oh, and man, he did, almost caught that He did that touch up. that ball. It's going to be Evans' he ball did first and ten when we get back. We'll take a timeout here at WJBF Game Night Live. And when Lakeside's got the football, take that back. Lakeside's got it. We'll be right back. Actually, hold on. We're going to keep it right here as Lakeside gets the football. So we're going to keep it right here. And let's see what happened. He touches it right. Let's see. Right there. Oh, and, oh and I thought he got it back. He did not get it back. It was Lakeside's number 22, Bryce Rowland, who got it back. So Lakeside is set up on the turnover. I said one of the keys, win the turno uh, the uh, special teams, and right now they are. So Ashley Brown, Nathan Edwards, they got Jack Thexton now lined up in the quarterback spot. Direct snap to him. He's going to run it, and Thexton's getting into the end zone. It's a touchdown. That's about a 12-yard touchdown run for Jack Thexton in Lakeside on the board quickly after the missed cue by Evans. Yeah, huge turnover there, and they capitalized on it. you got to cash in on a turnover in the red zone like that, and Lakeside did. Yeah, big, big play. And you watch Thexton followed his blockers. Great, great blocking downfield by Lakeside. Give them a lot of credit. And Thexton is in for the TD. And now we'll see if Lakeside can add the extra point. Doing the honors is number 89. That is Reese Jenkins. 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 We'll try to add the PAT here. And the kick is up, and the kick is good. So Lakeside on top, seven to nothing here in the early going. We'll be back with more Jank, uh, Game Night Live in just a second. And we are back here. I'm sorry, guys. It is super loud here, this big rivalry matchup between Lakeside and Evans, and the Panthers off to a great start as they were stopped on offense. But on the punt, Evans coughed up the football, gave Lakeside the ball at the 12-yard line, and on the very first play, Jack Thexton took a direct snap and carried it into the end zone. Panthers lead it 7-zip over the Knights. And... Now we'll get a chance to see Evans' offense barring <laughs> a turnover here. And the Knights field this one at about the 15. Oh, and ahead of steam for the return man. And he's still on his feet. That is a great run back. All the way. It was Rayshon King, the talented running back, taking it all the way back to the lakeside 40. Watch this return. He caught it at the 15-yard at the line. And look at that, 45-yard return for King. He is a Division I prospect coming off a 156-yard effort against Grovetown. Miami of Ohio has already offered him. 
coach has got to love that because Lakeside had all the momentum there with yeah. that turnover, and then you take it right back with that big kick return. Matter of fact, he took it right back to the spot they kicked it from, the 40-yard line. So now we'll get to see Evans' offense. The quarterback for Evans is number 14. Make sure that's it. Yeah, Trip Ferguson is in there. They used 11 different players to take a direct snap last week. And there's King up the middle, and he's going to pick up five. Last week they used 11 different guys taking a direct snap. You just don't see that every day. Yeah, you don't see it every day because a lot of times oh, we got a player injured on the field. And we're going to go down on the field for an Augusta Auto Auction sideline report. Here's Kira Goldstein. Hey guys, yeah, I got a chance to talk to Coach Barrett Davis before the game regarding the Evans offense, and he kind of dropped a little bit of a bomb on me. He told me that transfer Noah Story is actually out. He dislocated his shoulder. It's unclear how long he's going to be out. It could be just a few weeks. It could be a season-ending injury. No one really knew that. He really wanted to keep that a secret, so he dressed him today to be able to kind of confuse Lakeside a little bit. But that was a big blow to their offense, and uh, he, he dropped that bomb on me today, and I know you guys knew about it, so it was, it was a pretty much of a shock down here. Thank you, Kira. Yeah, so Noah Story last week played. He had 43 yards rushing. He was five for six passing but with that shoulder injury, won't play tonight. Not sure how long he'll be out. But. Yeah, and then you just had your first offensive play of the night, and Mason Short is limping off the field. Yeah, one of the premier linemen in the country in the class of, I got to count, 2026. <laughs> he's only a sophomore. And here's King again, this time to the left side, and he's going to be brought down. And right about the line of scrimmage. Noah Short, who... A nationally rated player, five-star or four-star, depending on the publication. But he had to limp off the field. Not sure what the injury is. Hopefully we'll get an update on that. Yeah, I know everybody gets enamored in the yeah. five and the four-star. But if you're in that category, you're pretty stinking good. I always say, once you get offered by Ohio State, Alabama, or Georgia, you can pretty much go anywhere. And he's got offered by all of them. <laughs> so as Ferguson throws this one, and it's just a little bit – it was he, he had to get that pass out slightly quicker, and if he did it, it may have been caught by Tyler Perry. Instead, it's incomplete, and it's going to be fourth down yeah. for nice the Knights. Play. Nice play by Cole Taylor there for Lakeside, knocking that ball down in the secondary. Fourth and six here, and Evans is going to go for it. And the Knights, they go for it on fourth down. No flag, and the pass is incomplete, so Lakeside will get it back. And while we have a second, let me tell you about our friends at Rally Point Grill. You looking for a taste of home? Look no further. Rally Point Grill, your hometown hotspot. Hear the live music Tuesdays and Wednesdays or test your knowledge with uh, trivia every Thursday night. Don't miss the fan favorite wing special. 20 wings and two drinks, just 20 bucks, or indulge in our signature Valor fries topped with braised beef, beer cheese, and smoked house sauce. Rally Point Grill, Washington Road right here in Evans. Good food, good times, and good people. Rally Point Grill, come on down. And by the way, made my first trip there literally within the last week. My wife and I, the braised beef, Big time, big time. Well, once again, you didn't wait long. <laughs> Midway through the first quarter, and you're making me starving again. <laughs> Lakeside with the ball and the lead. And on first down, see, that's been, Evans' struggle has been on offense at times this year. Their defense tries to keep them in it, but they have struggled at times on offense to move the football. So they'll give them four on that one. That was Caleb Jackson. As Mikael Grissom leads this offense. Seven to nothing on the Knights. Panthers with it on second and six from the 40. And that play is blown dead. We got a timeout, Lakeside. Want to talk things over? Yeah, Hibbets was wanting them to go a little bit faster there. Yeah. 
Well, folks, right now at McDonald's, get any size of your favorite frozen drink, like the new Hawaiian Frozen Punch or any size Metcafe iced coffee. They're only $1.89, McDonald's. I'm loving it. Get you several of those. Nah, yeah. Those are good. I've had those, too. Hey, I have to do it. It's show research. <laughs> show prep. Yeah, we appreciate you being with us tonight. And, of course, tonight, 1135, WJBF News Channel 6 Football Friday night. Brendan Robertson taking you through all the games. 30 minutes dedicated to high school football each and every Friday night. Yeah, we got a few good games in the area tonight for sure. Yeah. That, that North Augusta, South Aiken, Midland Valley region is going to be fun to watch. South Aiken finally got one of their best players back last week full time, so they're a lot better in their record. Show. Yeah, Javon Edwards, he rushed for over 200 yards last week. He's got several Division I offers. Here's Mikael Grissom. He gets to the outside. Grissom across midfield. He is going to be brought down. No, he gets out of bounds at about the 45-yard line. So Mikael Grissom, again, one of the keys. Got to contain this guy. He is ultra quick. And there you see him. They got him out of bounds, but not before he was able to get all the way to the 44-yard line. Lakeside on the move here. Panthers lead it by a score of 7 to nothing. 5.04 to go first quarter. Ashley Ground, Nathan Edwards, Kira Goldstein, and the entire WJBF crew with you tonight. And he's going to keep it again as Grissom. This time, though, he's going to be brought down a pickup of about a yard. Good job by Evans there to contain him. You can't let him get to the outside with that speed. Good job up front by the Knights. There you see big number 67, Greg Williams. Kel Grissom, after a pickup of a yard, going to be second and nine. And a little delay in the backfield, and they're going to, it's going to cost him as Harrington and Jackson both there for Evans to bring down B.J. Grissom. So third and ten, they gained a yard on first, lost a yard on second, third down and ten for McKell Grissom in this lakeside offense. Two teams know each other very well. The kids know each other very well. The coaching staff know each other very well. Always a big week. And Grissom's going to throw in trouble. Now he's going to scramble. And he is brought down from behind. And that was number 53 that got him for the Evans Knights. And that's Alan Morris, one of the leaders up front on both sides of the ball. So that will... It's going to be fourth down from the 30. About a fourth and five. I believe he was able to get enough that yeah. they're going to go for this. Yeah, they're at the 39, so they're going to keep the offense on the field here. Fourth down and five yards. They've got to get inside the 34 for the first down. Russell trying to draw him off. He doesn't. See if they decide to go ahead and run a play here. They're going to take the penalty and punt it away. The clock is out, so they're going to take the penalty and try to pin Evans back. A little surprised they didn't just straight go for it there? A little bit, a little bit. I, you know, this is – I think both coaches realize this is going to be a close ball game probably. And I think maybe he said, you know, we got a chance to pin them back and let our defense – we stopped them earlier. If we can pin them back and really dominate – field of position in this game, we got a chance. So, and that play was blown dead before Lakeside could punt it away. Number 80, Joey Kravokin yeah, doing the punting. Timeout Evans, they were uh, still trying to get the punt return team on. I think they yeah. felt like Lakeside still may would go for it there. Yeah, you can't blame them for thinking it. That's kind of the philosophy in football now. If you're in that 30 to 45 yard range and you're not going to kick it, why not go for it? Lakeside decides they're going to punt it though. 
You know, remember, they took the football to start the game, so Evans will get it to start the second half. About 2.43 to go here in the first. The Knights should get the ball here. Yeah, this day and age with analytics, they're they're going for it on their own 40-yard line yeah, half the time. That's true, yeah. I mean, you know, the, there's a coach, some philosophies say go for it every time, you know. Mathematically, it might make sense. And Lakeside's going to punt it away here on fourth and ten. Last time around, the Knights fumbled the punt and set up the Block. Lakeside score. This one's blocked, though. And it is recovered by Lakeside, but it'll be Knights' ball at the 45-yard line. Well, Lakeside got a big special teams play, and now Evans gets one. So he got in there and got it. Big fella just blowing right through the blockers, and, oh, that is not going to be a good film session for number 54 for Lakeside. Big term, Anthony Chermack. He's not going to like that one. He is. The defender ran right through him and blocked that punt. Yeah, that has to be incredibly frustrating as a coach. They they sent one guy after the punt, and they yeah. blocked it. That's right. You're right. Just one person. He blew the whole thing up. New guy in the backfield, E.J. Hogan. Hogan going to carry it right up the middle. And he picks up decent yardage. Hogan's going to get – he's going to get four yards. E.J. Hogan, again, they'll use a lot of different guys back there tonight, taking that direct snap. One of them will not be Noah Story, the quarterback who's been much traveled. He was at Lakeside as a freshman, ended up at Thompson his last two seasons, and then this year made the move over to Evans, and right now dealing with an injured shoulder. And it looks like they've left Hogan in there. So the Knights on second and seven. They gave him three there. Hogan with the handoff, and they're going to pick up oh, about four yards. So it should be third and three. So that was Braden Johnson on the carry for Evans. So third down and three with E.J. Hogan in at quarterback. He's going to run it right behind Johnson, and I don't think he's going to get it. He's going to be short. E.J. Hogan, no gain. That's going to be fourth down and three. So fourth down for the Knights. They got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Good push up front by Lakeside. And one of the main guys up there for the Panthers is number nine, Justin Barnes. He is a tough customer. So Lakeside's defense held last time and got them to turn it over on downs on fourth down, trying to do the same thing here. So Hogan leading the Evans offense. Big play here. Fourth and three, and there's a timeout on the field. Timeout, Evans. So let's check it out here. We've got fourth and three. You're Evans. You take the timeout. The Ken Nugent one call. That's all. Nathan, what do you do here? It's 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 – Closer to a third and four than I think it is a third and three. I don't know that you can just run that ball right up the middle. I would, I would love some kind of get on the edge at least. Um, even even if you're not going to throw it, give, give him the threat that you're going to throw that ball, um, and then let him kind of tuck it and run with it. Well, let's see what the Knights choose to do here. They have Hogan still in there at quarterback. We haven't seen him throw it yet. Let's see what they choose to do here on a big play in this ball game, fourth down and three. And talked about Mason Short being out right now on the bench with an injury, so you can't run behind him here. Well, they like to run behind Stephen Hurd. He's kind of the leader up front, the senior leader. Let's see if that's what they choose to do here. Looks like they plan to run to the right side of the line here if they're going to run it. And that is exactly where Hogan goes, and he's going to weave his way, but he's going to be short of the first down by a couple of yards. So nice job by the Panthers. Number 25 in there, that's Corbin Velez. And the junior linebacker makes the tackle, and Lakeside will take over on downs as the defense stiffens after Evans. Evans goes nowhere after that 
long kickoff return. You figure the kickoff return got all the way back to the 40. Evans only moved the ball. Oh, actually, th this came after the block punt. So they do not capitalize on the turnover as Lakeside was able to. Chris Alpepper's at the 37 yard line. So here comes Mikel Grissom. His brother BJ in the backfield with him. We'll see what the Panthers dial up here. Beautiful night for football. And Grissom's going to run it, and he's going to pick up a couple along the right side of the line. Clock continues to run. We're under 30 seconds left here in the first quarter. Stick around for the conclusion of tonight's game. We will announce our McDonald's offensive and defensive players of the game. We'll get a chance to hear from them after the game, along with the victorious coach. Our highlights at the halftime may just be punts. <laughs> well, yeah, a fumbled punt, a blocked punt. Those have been the big plays for sure. And now Lakeside's going to let this clock run out. And that will do it for the first quarter. Lakeside on top, 7 to nothing. Second and six when we come back for the Panthers on Game Night Live. We are back here at Evans High School, WJBF Game Night Live. Lakeside leads Evans as we start in the second quarter, 7-0. Second down and six for Mikhail Grissom. He hands this one off to his brother, BJ, who is going nowhere. And that's ja that is Jackson again with the tackle. And another leader for the Knights, Jacob Jackson with the play. Neither offense is – Lakeside's done a little bit more, but they did, of course, benefit from the turnover deep in Evans' territory. So the defense is tonight, Nathan, playing pretty well. Yeah, absolutely. The line of the scrimmage for the offensive lines has really been a struggle so far. And so it's a big third down play for the Panthers. And Grissom is going to throw it. He's been accurate when he's had time. He dumps it off in the flat. It's his brother, B.J., who's going to get across midfield. It's going to be a first down for the Panthers. So he looked at his second option, and that's a good cue for us to check out our QBs by the quarter, brought to you by Culpepper Lumber Ace Hardware. Yeah, Grissom for Lakeside was 3 of 4 for 17 yards in that first quarter and added 21 yards on the ground, and Ferguson for Evans was 0 of 2 passing. And Coach, there's Mikhail Grissom, and Coach Hibbett sent, uh, by way of Kira Goldstein, sent John Hart and I a message really touting his players, which I love. Uh, he is very high on Mikael Grissom. He's very high on Jack Thexton. He's very high on Ty Jones and wanted us to remind us that these players are something special. And they hand it off up the middle, and it's a nice pickup. And I believe that was Caleb Jackson. It was Jackson. He's across the 45 out of the 44-yard line. So Jackson picks up six on first down. It's going to be second and four. Second and four Panthers. And they give it again to the running back, and that's Jackson. And he's brought down by Jackson. Caleb Jackson wrapped up by Jacob Jackson. Got back to the line of scrimmage and maybe a half yard. Third down, Panthers. When they've given... Grissom time to throw, he's been very good. The problem is they've really gotten after him a couple of times too. Yeah, we'll see if Evans blitzes here uh, again. They, they've brought five uh, a couple of times when we get home. Oh, an interesting play there. I like that, but Evans ready for it. Great play in the open field by one of the Knights DBs coming up and making the stop there is number 21, Jeremy Howard. Watch this play in the open field by Howard. Boy, as a coach, you love to see your DBs come up and make that kind of play. I love the play call. Uh, bring Thexton over in motion, and then he gets under center and pitches it to Grissom. But the Knights were ready for it. Yeah, well, that's, we're going to see that a lot from the secondaries tonight because they just do not trust the uh, opposing quarterback to throw the ball on yeah. them that much. And so they're just running downhill every time. Boy, this punt takes an incredible lakeside bounce. And they are going to down it at the two-yard line, maybe the three. We will take a timeout as Evans is pinned deep in their own territory early second quarter here on Game Night Live. And we welcome you back. And there's a look at the student section here. 
Payne College Lions student section. Big crowds on both sides, student section tonight, Nathan. Absolutely, it's a great atmosphere for football, and Evans with some good news. See right there in the middle of your screen, Mason Short back out on the field. Yeah, it looked like maybe he turned his ankle, but he's back out there. Bad news, though, is they're pinned back at their own two or three yard line to start this drive. They hand it off, and oh, a big hole, and here we go. It's gonna be a big gainer. This might be six. Across the 50, the 40, the 30. That is gonna be a touchdown for the Knights. That is Ray Sean King, the Division I prospect from 97 yards, longest play. Is that the longest play in Game Night Live history? Possible. It is the longest run from scrimmage, I think. 97 uh, yards officially. Ray Sean King, there you see the speed. That's why Miami of Ohio likes him so much. They offered him a full ride. And just like that, you think Lakeside's got him pinned back. And Lakeside sort of played like a goal line defense. And once you're able to break that first line, it's a touchdown, 97 yards for King. And Wallace is on to tack on the extra point to tie it up here. He is one of the better kickers in the state. And it's no good, though. It looks yeah. like maybe he pushed it to the right. Well, that was tough. It was, a, it was a bad snap, and the holder did a good job of getting the ball down, but it kind of messed up messed the timing. Up, messed up the timing. Well, folks, remember to cast your votes for the 44-strong player of the week in this week's poll on WJBF.com. The nominees this week are Trayvon Dunbar, Midland Valley, Jeremy Richardson, Michael Doe, Terrence Smith, Cam Austin, and Telly Johnson. The poll remains open until 11 o'clock p.m. tonight, and the winner will be revealed on Football Friday Night, which begins at 11.35. Tune in because it, you won't want to miss that, and that 44 strong, of course, a very uh, special Aunt, uh, Austin Parks, the former Lincoln County star, battled cancer and battled it mightily on two occasions and succumbed to it, and 44 strong named in his honor. So what a crazy turn of events here. I know they missed the extra point, but Evan's right back in it with that big run. Yeah, absolutely. You got them pinned deep down there. You're thinking maybe even safety, or you've really held them on the last possession there to kind of a to four and out in essence. Uh, so uh, really, really tough break there. They went to the goal line, like you said, had everybody in the box and broke through the line, and it was over after that. Yeah, King over 100 yards already, <laughs> yeah. almost on that one carry. So Wallace. They call him touchback Tyler. Let's see if he can boot another one into the end zone. That's what he's been doing all year. And he hammers this one as well, all the way back through the, the back of the end zone. Mm -hmm. And apparently Auburn and Tennessee both got wind of the hang time on his kicks and how deep in the end zone. And he got attention from both this week. He's been invited to go to a Tennessee game as a recruit. And he's still, he's only a junior. Yep, college coaches will love that. Not only kick it out of the end zone for no returns, but a lot of them like to try and do the What's high up, hang times if they can get somebody to try and return it because of the moving the ball to the 25 yeah. in college. It's a big difference. What I love, when he was in middle school, I got a message from one of his parents that said, hey, and it was obscure, asking me some weird kicking questions for the area. And I thought, that's kind of odd, you know? who has the longest kick, most field goals, all this stuff. He was setting his goals. He wanted to know what the longest kick was. He wanted to know, you know who the best kickers were and what the records were because he was going to go after them. And I love that kind of, you know, that, that, that setting those type goals and that kind of competitiveness is what you need. And he has certainly worked at it. This summer named all -American, National All-American by Coles and that big kicking event they do throughout the summer. Yeah, Evans and Lakeside both have had some good kickers. Through yeah. Years. Matter of fact, Lakeside's kicker from a year ago, uh, Will Hadaway, is at Georgia right now on the Bulldogs football team. And good run up the middle. Good hard run by Grissom. That's B.J. Grissom, the running back. And eight minutes to go here in the second quarter. Seven to six, Lakeside. Looks like I got a short touchdown run from 12 yards out from Jack Dexton. And Evans just hit the, you know, the goal mine with the long touchdown run, 97 yards from their star, Rayshon King. 
And this time Grissom's going to keep it, Mikel Grissom, and he's up to the 45-yard line. It'll be a first down for the Evans Knights. The Georgia Army National Guard offers so much more than you think. Get a degree with money for school, learn job skills that translate to the civilian world, make bonds that last a lifetime and earn pride for life. When you become a guard soldier, your family will thank you, your country will thank you, and your future will owe you. Georgia Army National Guard. Love them coming out to all the games and doing some challenges sometimes for the kids and letting the kids hear about ways they can get their college paid for, all that good stuff. Yes, you, you, as a coach, you'll take a 97-yard touchdown any time you yeah, can get it, yeah. but this defense has been on the field a, a long, long time. Yeah, you're right. And this is Grissom along the left side, and he's going to keep pushing. He's going to pick up about three. I just saw the night mascot come into the stadium. Did nobody tell him it was a 7.30 kickoff? <laughs> What's he doing up here with us? I guess he went to the concession stand or something. Actually, he didn't even – he could have gone to the one down there, so yeah, I don't know what he's doing. Slacking yeah. on the job, I guess. The Knight, Knight's mascot a few years ago could, could dance with the best of them. Yeah, we've had some good ones over the years, for, for sure. And the Panthers, second down here after the three yard pickup. And they do hand it off, and here's a head of steam for the ball carrier for Lakeside. That's Caleb Jackson. And he is going to be. Up near the first down marker, I think he's, he's going to be, he's going to have it. Yeah, he was right near the first down marker. The defensive end for Evans just missed him, and he had to wait to make sure that Mikel Grissom handed the ball off. He didn't want the quarterback to take off around the end, and that little hesitation allowed the running back, Caleb Jackson, to cut in there and pick up good yardage. Yeah, we're talking about how much the Knights defense has been on the field. Um, Evans has only run nine offensive plays, and we've only got five minutes left in the half. Mikhail Grissom going to throw it downfield. It's intercepted. He tried to throw it on the run. He underthrew it severely, and it's picked off by the Knights. And it was number seven who got it, Cole Taylor. Yeah, just a bad decision here. You see Grissom scrambling, and he kind of short arms this one on the run. And he, he had a guy, but he severely underthrew it. And Taylor picks it off. So a block punt and now an interception. And these two teams might be whoever wins the mistake battle wins this football game because both of them have made a couple of big errors. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was one of the ones. As soon as Grissom let it go, he knew he shouldn't have done yeah. that. Threw it right back across and the you know middle of the field. You, you love your guys trying to make plays, but you know sometimes you've got to know when you're doing too much. So now, now Evans with a lot of momentum. They're down by one, but they, their defense gets the turnover. Their offense is coming off a huge touchdown run. And they bring back in the man who started the game at quarterback, Trip Ferguson. And he is he's a young youngster, just a sophomore. And in the backfield, we've got a different running back as well. That's going to be Brandon Mims, I believe. And Mims is going to pick up nice yardage along the right side. He's going to get about six or seven. So Brandon Mims with a nice run. Evans with the momentum as we are now approaching the five-minute mark of this first half. Stick around at halftime. Kira Goldstein's got all sorts of good stuff coming your way. And they hand it off again to Mims, and this time brought down Velez. Makes another nice play for Lakeside, the junior linebacker. Number 25 coming in and making a stop. Here's a look at Mason Short, big 75, 6'7", 300 pounds. Back in the game, got that cast on the right hand. He is, by the way, guys, he's a 10th grader. <laughs> so just look at him standing next to the running backs. He's just massive. The leader on that night's offensive line, though, or I say a sophomore, he's a junior. I keep getting those years confused. Mom and dad may, may go, man, we can't, we can't feed them for another year, A.B. Yeah. 
So let's see here. The leader on that offensive line, though, is the senior, and that's Stephen Hurd. He wears 72. And let's take a look at what's coming up on Local Living. Hey guys, I'm Anna Christina, host of Local Living. Be sure to catch us every Saturday at 9.30 to find out what's happening in the CSRA. Local Living, Saturday morning at 9.30 on News Channel 6. And there you go, Local Living. Anna Christina. Evans out of timeouts now. 4.16 to go, the Knights with the ball, third and four. After this play, we'll check in with Kira down on the sidelines. All right, we'll see what's going on here. Trip Ferguson, big third down play, third and four. Brandon Mims in the backfield with the quarterback. And Mims going to roll out. The lefty looking to throw, going downfield. He's got a man, and it's off the receiver. Oh, it's caught. It is caught. What a catch. Early candidate. Hey, as if the 97-yard touchdown run would be play of the game. What about this catch? Unbelievable catch, good concentration. The ball tipped up by the receiver, and he goes and gets it all the way down to the 10-yard line. That is Dontevious Williams. What a catch. Now the big plays are killing Lakeside, and they're going to hand it off to King, and King is going to be met by Justin Barnes, and that is not a good sign if you're a running back being met by that guy. Second and goal for the Knights. And I, we, we're going to check in with Kira. We had the big play. Let's go down there now, Kira, with an Augusta auction, uh, auto auction sideline report. Guys, I was over on the Lakeside sideline, but I really didn't have to be. I could have guessed what Coach Hibbets is telling his team right now. He's telling them, take the pressure off of yourself. He's really big on the mental game. He's told his guys from the beginning of the season and every single game, bad things are going to happen in a game, but you need to just relax and focus on the next play. So he's over there preaching the mental game, and I think we're going to see what comes of that now here in a second. Got to get a stop here on second and goal, and they're going to run him out of bounds. That was number three. That's Hogan. Yeah, B.J. Grissom pushes him out of bounds. They're going to lose a couple. So third and goal from the 12-yard line for Evans. They've got a great kicker, although they did miss the extra point. Wallace is definitely within his range here. That This is where you tell your quarterback, don't do anything crazy. You know, you, we saw Grissom take a chance and threw the pick. If you're Ferguson and they let you throw it, make sure you throw it where your guy gets it or nobody gets it. If anything, I'll throw a fade. We've got one-on-one -on -one down here at the yeah, bottom got of the one -on -one screen. one-on-one with Williams who made the big catch earlier. Let's see what they do. They are looking. Uh, Harrington's going to roll across his body and throw. He's got a man, but it's underthrown. Great coverage. Good ball skills there. When we talk about closing speed, that is Seatric Pickett. He's got a scholarship offer already. Watch him come out of nowhere and knock that ball away. Great play by Pickett. So it's going to be fourth down, and they will bring on Wallace and the kicking team, I believe. Let's see. Yes. I say that. Yeah, and there goes Wallace. Yep. We'll see if we get a little bit of better snap here. Yeah, that snap, you're right. Earlier on the extra point, the timing was thrown off by the snap. The holder for Evans is number six. Uh, that is Marco and Chancey. He did a good job trying to get it down, but again, it just threw off the timing. So that one's going to be spotted. Where they got that at the 19, so it'll be a 29 yarder. And Wallace's kick is up, and that kick is good. So the Knights have their first lead of the game on the 29 yard field goal. And Tyler Wallace, after the huge pass play from Trip Ferguson. So number two, Dontevious Williams, who made an acrobatic catch on a tipped ball. Boy, those two big plays. If you're lakeside, you feel like you've done a great job, but those two big plays have changed the game. Absolutely. Like we said, stick around at halftime for some festivities, some good interviews, find out about a lot of local folks, and 
We'll have stats from the first half. We'll have our QBs by the quarter. Yeah, so if you're lakeside defensively, you've given up 156 yards, but you've given up 140 of it on two plays. That's amazing. 16 yards on every other play, but 100 that is that's crazy. 140 yards on two plays? Wow. Yeah, 97 yard touchdown run, a 43 yard pass. And bear with us on the they're playing Rocky Top here. I guess because Wallace is going to go visit Tennessee. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Is that a, is that a commitment all of a sudden? Is that know. what we just saw? That'd be a heck of a way to commit after a kick and they play your song on the PA. And Wallace booms this one. Another long, deep kick through the back of the end zone for Wallace. What a what a luxury to have. Nobody can return the ball on him. He kicks it through the back of the end zone every time, and sometimes in the air through the back of the end zone. So Lakeside will try to answer here. 2.47 to go. But it's another spot where, hey, it's 9-7. to seven. It's not the end of the world. You don't want to do anything crazy. You want to protect the football, try to get a drive going. They've been able to run the football. They've been the more effective offense. Uh, grinding it out. It's just those two big plays for Evans have been the difference. So let's see what they dial up here to the Panthers with Mikael Grissom in at quarterback. He hasn't ran it as much as I thought we might see, and there's a false start on it on Lakeside. So that will back Still first up down. five yards. Yeah, that first drive, they came out kind of spreading around, throwing it a lot more, yeah. and had a little bit of success, but we've been mainly run since. Well, after they did get those first two completions, they got sacked a couple of times, then they did complete a screen pass, but the, the pressure did affect that a little bit. And they've run the football pretty well. Their drives have stalled at times, but they run it pretty well. They've got 93 yards on the ground. So, Grissom going to hand it off. This is Caleb Jackson. Jackson's going to be, oh, the ball comes out. Lakeside picked it up, it's Stexton. He's running down the sidelines across midfield. He's going to be brought down from behind by Rayshawn King but not before he picks up big yardage. What a heads up play by Thexton. And I don't know, can he pick that up and run with it? That's the question. It goes in the air, but it was forward. I don't know, it was a fumble. That is a, why I don't know that he can advance that. We got an oh, wow, wow, this is gonna be off of the lakeside. I'm pretty sure I heard this have an inadvertent whistle. So I guess they're saying he could advance it. Yeah, so the referee blew the wow. whistle. Boy, Hibbets is not happy. There you see Steve Hibbets. I don't blame him in that one. Wow. And, I, you know, look, the officials, they're, they're not perfect. They're going to make some mistakes. But Steve Hibbets is not happy. That was a huge play for Lakeside. And instead, replay it down. they're going to replay it. Replay it down. Yeah. You're not perfect, but as an official, you never want to have that big of an impact where your mistake is that big. Yeah, I mean, they would have had the ball. That was a, were they at the 20? That was a 40-yard play. I was trying to figure out as a stats person how in the world I was going to put that yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Texton was heads up on the play, but it'll come all the way back, and they'll do the play over. First and 15. Well, I said it was a 40-yard play. It's actually 45 because the ball was at the 15-yard line, not the 20. There we go. They'll do it over. First and 15 for the Panthers. And they lose 20 seconds off the clock as well. And this one's a bobbled snap. Grissom is going to try to make something happen, but he's going to be brought down for a two- or three-yard loss. Yeah, this is where you got to go back to what Kira was talking about. You got to let that play go and move on. Well, do you do you start to try to run the clock here with the Evans having no timeouts? Yeah, this is a tricky yeah. one here. At this point, I think you just try and get out of the half. Yeah, just run the clock here, and, and they've got they can run it all the way down on this play down to a minute 34 before they snap it, or a minute 35. And then they'd be able to get it down under a minute, even if they don't get the first down. But you know, just let the quarterback keep it. He breaks to the outside. Nowhere to really go there, though. 
And he's going to get out. Wow, he runs out of bounds, though. Not a, not a smart play there, running it out of bounds. Because yeah. that stops the clock with a minute 38. Yeah, he needed to fall down in bounds there. They could have run that clock all the way under a minute. Yeah, it's just it's hard for a player. You're trying to yeah. keep oh, making yeah. a play. You're 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 not you don't want to as a player. For us up yeah, here. as a player, you're like I'm not giving up on this yeah. drive. So the clock is stopped. Minute 36 to go. So now Evans didn't have you know no timeouts left, but that stoppage helps them if they can stop Blake's out here. They'll get the ball back, and they may get very good field position. And again, the third and 14 from the 16. They're going to go deep, and uh, good coverage. That is great coverage. Marvin Harden, or Norman Harden, excuse me. Look at the coverage. He just blanketed the receiver and went up and made a good play on the ball as well. So Norman Harden with an outstanding play. So that will bring up fourth down. The punting team comes on. Now keep in mind too, they've had a punt block. They've had a snap that was snapped off the ground. So this is a big, big, the snap is as big as anything here. And I, also those blockers up front need to be ready. Big play here. And he's gonna get the punt off. It's gonna be Fielded on the run by the return man, and he runs right into a lakeside player. But Ooh. Evans is going to have great yep. field position. And there's going to be a flag now. Yeah, they just they got 15 yards. And now there's some now. pushing and shoving, and no, just no need in the pushing, man. I just don't get it. That is Antarian Moore, a senior. You just don't need it. It was a bang-bang play where the return man ran. I think that was Jeremy Howard, if I'm not mistaken. And he runs into the lakeside player, and then – Yes. Just no need for the pushing after the play. Number four, push two different players. Yeah, I think they may they, they may be looking at kicking him out of they the football game. They might eject him, yeah. Well, he pushed one of them in the face mask. Yeah, keep right him, with the official there. Keep control of this football game. It was definitely number four that pushed. That's Antarian Moore. And I think he's out of the game. Yep. Got, after the play, the lost sports like conduct. Number four, he's going to be ejected. Number four will be ejected. It's going to be a 15-yard penalty. It's going to be Evans' ball first down. So instead of Evans having the ball inside the 40-yard line of Lakeside, that 15-yard penalty is going to back him up, and the young man is kicked out of the football game. Got to keep your composure in that spot. I know this is a heated rival. I understand that, but you just got to keep your composure. So Evans was going to have the ball just inside the Lakeside 40, and instead they're going to be backed up. Yeah, I mean that's just. I mean, there's yeah. no, no excuse for that. And and like you're talking about where they have the ball, you you don't have to give them maybe five yards, and you're in field goal range. In field goal range, yep. Boy, that is. If they're unable to get any yardage here, that's going to be a play you think about if this one comes down to the wire. Ferguson in there at quarterback. He has the one big, deep completion. They're going to throw a screen. And that is Williams again. He's got both catches tonight. And he is brought down at mid, just across midfield. A second and two. Remember, the Knights have no timeouts. The Knights with no timeouts. They're hurrying, trying to get this snap. Ferguson going to hand it off and got to get to the sidelines here. And they're not he going didn't. to. They're going to get him down in bounds. Yep, that's a big mistake. Yeah, he needed to run straight for the sidelines there. And I believe that was King on the carry. So the clock is going to run 45 seconds and counting. It's so touch, tough to teach a young player situational awareness yep. in a yep. football game. <laughs> didn't get the first down either. No, yeah, third down. They got to get the first. They're going to throw it for the completion. That's the first down. The clock will stop briefly. You got to hurry up to the line and spike the football here. The clock will stop. There's 28 seconds. Once they get the chain set, the clock's going to start again. You want to snap it as close as you can to 28 seconds and, and spike it, or maybe fake spike it and run it. And they do spike it. That was one of the oddest spikes I've seen in a while. 
He basically threw that one in a lineman's foot. So, so you, you've seen the leg, A.B., if you had to guess, where, how far do you think he could kick one? Are you talking I, he like can, he can kick one? 55, 50 to 55? I don't 55? know about that. I, I, know, I know he kicked it that far in practice, but I think they would feel comfortable letting him try a 50-yarder. I think if they can get it to about the 33-yard line, so about 10 more yards, I think they might try a kick. Harrington, or excuse me, uh, Ferguson is going to throw. Downfield, got a man in the middle of the field. That is Williams again. He's having a big night. They're in field goal range. It'd be a long one. There is a flag down. And it's going to be a hold, it looks like. Yep. yep. Boy, that is going to get No, 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 you rat him. 11 seconds left. So now they may only have time for one play and then set up for a field goal. If you can get it to the sidelines and get out of bounds, obviously that would be ideal. Give your kicker time to come onto the field and not be so rushed. The question is, do you have time to complete a pass? I don't think you down do. it. I don't think you do. I don't know. Yeah. Because if you keep it in the middle of the field, you got to go almost 20 yards down the field. There's no way the lineman and everything are going to get if, there. If you don't have the personal foul, yeah. you've already got the yardage for the yeah. field goal. That is a huge penalty there. They're going to go try to get some yardage here. Clock. This is going to be the last play of the half. They hand it off to King, and he is going to be hit and brought down at about the 47-yard line. And that is going to do it. A very good, very entertaining first half, Nathan, with the big plays on both sides. Absolutely. Definitely big plays. We had the big plays in the punting game, and then the two huge offensive plays for Evans really set up their two scores. Yeah, outstanding plays on both sides. But right now, the Evans Knights lead it 9-7. to seven. And we're going to go down to the field where Kira Goldstein has head coach Barrett Davis of the Knights. Hey, Coach, you said that a big key to this game was going to be special teams. How do you feel about that performance so far? Well, I mean, we've done okay except for the first one. We just made a, we made a dumb mistake, and we told him forget about it. There's a lot of game left. And then he made a good catch down here to make up for it to get us a field goal. So, um, you know, we just got we to protect the football. Our guys are trying. Their guys are trying. So, um, you know, we just got to come out and we got to execute the second half a little better on all three phases. So. It's a big rivalry game. It's getting a little chippy out there. How do you expect your team to control their emotions? Well, we just told them, I mean, you, you play with your pads and your helmet. That's what you play with. You don't play with any kind of words or emotions. You know, you got to control those things in games like this. So, I mean, they just they got to learn to keep it within within reason and stuff. And, you know, both teams are wanting to win. So, it's a, we understand. Thanks, Coach, for the time. We appreciate it. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Game Night Live. I'm here on the sideline with Kelly and Tiffany from Rally Point Grill. And can you tell me a little bit about why your restaurant is so amazing? Well, we are a veteran-owned, veteran-operated restaurant that honors the uh, service of other military veterans and first responders. Um, we feature uh, pressed-to-order uh, burgers made with top-quality fresh ground beef. We offer weekly wing specials. We have a Friday night fish fry with hand-battered uh, haddock, and we offer um, weekly drink specials on game days on the weekends. We also offer live music on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. I heard you mention some of those specials. What are some of your favorite specials that you guys offer? Wow, so our wing special is very popular. It's 20 wings, two drinks for $20. We also offer um, our, our uh, top quality braised beef, which is our slow cooked uh, sirloin braised beef, and and then of course uh, our fish uh, is is hand breaded haddock, and I think we're probably the only restaurant in the CSRA that offers that. And where are you located? For all the people that are definitely going to want to check out your restaurant, we are at 4446 Washington Road, across from Walmart in Evans. Thank you so much, guys. Check it out for sure. But for now, we're going to take a look at our really cool Evans School Package. I love working with the students. I get to teach them from their freshman year all the way till their senior year. So I'm with them for um, three of their years here in high school. And I get to see them mature from you know, maybe not so mature freshmen to very, very mature juniors and seniors that are very professional and become medical professionals while with me. It looks hard, it looks rigorous, but in reality, you're gonna be prepared. You're gonna be able to 
succeed in this program and use your skills. You're going to be taught what you need to know. You really come together with your classmates to learn more and it's really helped to get more of an understanding. You can all help each other out to learn more in detail and everything. It's really fun. It's like a whole family. The first course that they take is Introduction to Healthcare Science. They learn the very basics of healthcare. In the second year, it's called Essentials of Healthcare, and that is an anatomy and physiology class. So they are learning basic anatomy and the disease processes that go along with it. Then their third year, they come to me and they do the Allied Health and Medicine course, where they extensively study all types of procedures, diseases, they learned phlebotomy, how to do an EKG, how to perform blood sugars. This course leads to becoming a medical assistant. They're certified nationally as medical assistants and they can go to any state to practice. And this is obtained while in high school. Although it is very rigorous, it is a college level course, they're able to complete this while in high school and pursue their medical career while they're very young. I have more of an understanding of who I want to be in the future and with all the experience in the hospital I know that being a certified medical assistant now I can work anywhere even just as I'm 18 so I can have a job in college. I can work in hospitals, outpatients, I can do all types of things. The community is in dire need of medical professionals be it medical assistants, registered nurses, physical therapists. This program helps fill that need within the community and I am very, very fortunate to be able to work with some of the very best students here at Evans High School that are sweet and compassionate and caring and I know they will become wonderful medical assistants and further their education in college. Having a teacher uh, like Ms. Gordon who encourages you and pushes you outside of your comfort zone really helps me prepare for um, college and the future of rock. Oh, tell us that. Tell us that. I am back on the sideline with my friend Sean from McDonald's. And Sean, can you tell me how you got involved with McDonald's? Uh, I started as a crew person about 31 years ago uh, in Colorado and made my way out to here. So now I'm a director of operations. And what are some of the exciting things that are happening in, at McDonald's around here? Uh, we have a new couple of sauces that just are about to start in a couple of weeks. Um, we just reopened a restaurant down the street over at Town Center, uh, rebuilt it. it. Looks pretty nice, just opened, so that's exciting. And then getting ready for a thing called Best Burger. We're going to be changing how we cook the sandwiches, and they should be tasting pretty good. So. I know that the community is a really big part of McDonald's, especially high school students. Why is it so important that high school students know that they can come work at McDonald's and be involved? Well, they first of all, they love the food and, you know, they come there and we have a lot of high school students and we really support, obviously, the student athletes and just the students in general. Um, a lot of our workforce is represented by our young ch uh, teenagers and we really like their energy and excitement. They definitely bring a, an interesting perspective that we value, so it's been fun. Awesome. Thanks so much, Sean. Make sure to check out that new renovated McDonald's. Very cool. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Game Night Live Lakeside at Evans. I'm here on the sideline with my friend Brittany from the Georgia Department of Public Health. Hey, can you tell me a little bit about your role with the Department of Public Health? Sure, so with the Department of Public Health, I work for Columbia County. Um, so we offer services to the community for family planning, like annual appointments, PAPs, um, cervical and breast exams. We also do immunizations. We have a walk-in clinic right now for kids um, every Wednesday from 8 to 3. What you do is so important. How do people get a chance to come in if they want to uh, get an appointment or where should they go to get more information on the amazing things you guys do? Okay, so we are located at 1930 William Few Parkway. Um, you can also contact us by phone at 706-868-3330. Awesome, thank you so much, Brittany. We're gonna now check in with the Evans Band. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a big hand for the Lakeside High School Marching Panther Band.
I'm here with Sergeant Aja Mackey. And can you tell me a little bit about enlisting and what the process is like? Yes, the process to joining the National Guard, pretty simple. The first thing you have to do is take an ASVAB. That's a test set up kind of like the SAT. And then you'll come in and do a physical. And from then you could just enlist. And what are the age requirements to list? To enlist, you have to be at least 17 years old and a junior in high school. And I have Graceland here. She's a junior at EHS. And can you tell me what made you want to join the National Guard? Um, the benefits were very enticing. I want to go to college for business. And the National Guard pays for your college while paying you while you're in college. So it was all very attention grabbing. And if there's a student or a kid that's looking at you and saying, huh, maybe I want to do that, what would your message be to that person? Always chase and follow your own path. Don't do what everybody else is doing. And definitely, definitely take advantage of what you're getting. Thank you so much, Sergeant Aja and Graceland. We appreciate it. We're going to toss back to the band. back on the sideline with Anthony Sweat. And Anthony, I know that you are planning something for the Holder family. Can you tell us what you're planning? Yeah, we're going October 9th, we're going to do a, a charity golf tournament at Rocky Branch. Uh, all the proceeds are going to Coach Holder and his family, so we're going to invite everybody to come out. You can sponsor a hole, have a foursome. Uh, JHSweatFoundation.com backslash Holder Strong. All your registration information. If you don't play golf, you can register to uh, sponsor a hole or donate on the website. For those of you guys who don't know the Holder family, he's a legendary coach and they lost everything in a fire. Can you talk about why this is so important that the community rallies around him, especially since he was your coach? Well, I think probably 85% of people in Columbia County either had Coach Holder as a coach or their son played for Coach Holder. So as much as he had an impact on all of our lives, there's never a time where I don't meet a fellow guy that played for Holder that we ain't got a, a TH store. So it's the perfect time for us to give back to him so much that he gave back to us many years before. It's amazing what you're doing. Check out the Sweat Foundation for more. We're gonna raise some money for Coach Holder and his family through the great game of golf. For now, we're gonna take a quick break and we'll be right back. I'm here on the field with Coach Hibbets, and Coach, I know you talked about the mental game and how big that is. What is your guys' mentality right now heading into the second half? Oh, we're in good shape. I, I feel like we played a great first half. We just uh, shot ourselves in the foot a couple of times there. Defense is just playing lights out. We had a couple plays there. But look, man, this, these are fun games, absolutely. It definitely looks fun, but the defense did give up 175 yards, and 140 of those came on two plays. What is going to be the adjustments you guys want to make moving into the second half to limit those big plays? I mean, really not adjustments because, like you said, 175 yards, you know, uh, three quarters of them came on two plays. It's just tweaking those couple of things. Maybe we're in the wrong place, but I love our guys' effort, man. They're playing so well. A.B., I know who you pick, man. <laughs> All right, Coach, thanks for the time. I'll let you get back out there to prove an A-B wrong. Oh, oh, man. 
I did say coin flip, Kira. It was a coin flip game. Could have gone either way. Yeah, somebody's got and some receipts. And it is 9-7. to seven. I love that they do that, though. I, when the coaches do it, I like it. When crazy fans do it, y'all leave me alone. <laughs> no, I love it. Uh, welcome back, folks, uh, here to the uh, iColts Law Firm Halftime Show. And we got a lot still we can get to. And I guess let's start with some of the scores from around the CSRA. There's some great games going on. Let's take a look at some. Wonderful matchup in single A. Lincoln County and Aquinas. That game is knotted at seven. Harlem rolling again this week. 23 zip. They lead Cross Creek. How about Burke County? They're about to go to six and oh. They lead Wayne County by 20. You've got Grovetown struggling with Brunswick, 28 nothing there. Augusta Christian, that game is flip-flopped. It's a, it's 28-7 Hammond over Augusta Christian there. Uh, North Augusta, though, boy, they're starting to really play well. They lead South Aiken 35-14, despite the fact that Javon Edwards, uh, the running back for South Aiken, has 160 yards at halftime, having a huge game. Strom Thurmond looking good, bouncing back from their loss last week. They lead Batesburg, Leesville, 30 zip. And Laney hanging in there with Washington County. It's 14 10. The Golden Hawks lead the Laney Wildcats in that one. And uh, those are your scores from around the CSRA. And of course, you can get all the finals, all the highlights, all the details during Football Friday night with Brendan later tonight on WJBF at 11.35. Nathan, let's get to our QBs by the quarter. They're brought to you by Culpepper Lumber Ace Hardware. Yeah, Grissom for Lakeside was four of seven in the first half for 27 yards, had the one costly interception. He's added 36 yards on the ground. And then Ferguson uh, is three of six uh, for 50, 56 yards passing, had that one really big play to Williams down and put him right down on the 10-yard line and ended up scoring. There you go, that's your QBs by the quarter. And let's take a look at the, you're gonna be blown away on these first half stats, folks. Let's take a look at the stats from the first half. Look, passing, not a huge difference. Rushing, not a huge difference. Turnover's big, Lakeside has one. Really, yeah, both. Yeah, correct. With the, Evans, yeah. Evans has with one the, as the well. The punt, Lakeside yeah. had the block punt as well. The big two are the bottom two. Let's go to the very bottom, penalties. Very clean game, only three penalties. Yeah. I might be cursing us for the second half, but it's been a clean football game. But right above that, the biggest stat of the year maybe, Nathan, look at that time of possession. Yeah, absolutely. So Evans has only run 19 plays to Lakeside's 32, and you've got to remember a lot of those plays were hurried up right there at the end of the half, yeah. or, or they made big plays. So I know there's not a lot of penalties, but those two very, very costly penalties have probably cost Evans three points. Evans has run 19 plays. Lakeside has had the ball 19 minutes. Wow. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yet the Knights lead it 9-7. to seven. And we do have a chance here. Let's get to some highlights from the first half. If we have time here, let's throw those in and take a look at how we got here. Here's Lakeside after the fumble punt. They run it in a 12-yard TD. That is Jack Dexton. That gave Lakeside the early lead 7 to nothing. Here, though, the block punt by Evans and a great job just busting through there. Gave the Knights great field position there, unable to come up with much. But here on the kickoff, watch this man, and Rayshon King has had himself a half. This was a big-time kickoff return by King as he gets all the way out to the 40-yard line. That one, though, came back. And then Lakeside, little pitch play, but watch this tackle. Wonderful play. Uh, that was Jeremy Howard coming up and making the stuff. And here might be the play of the half, maybe the play of the year. 97 yards, Rayshon King goes the distance. That gave put Evans on the board. They missed the PAT with some a uh, little bit of a bad snap. That put it at seven to six. And then you see the quarterback, Mikael Grissom, trying to make a play, underthrows it. It's picked off, intercepted by the Knights, and they get the ball there at the 42. Here was a big pass play. Watch this catch by Williams for Evans. He bobbles the ball, spins, and makes the grab at the 10-yard line. Amazing play. And that set up a field goal, and that's where we're at, 9-7. to seven. The Knights uh, lead it here as we start get ready to start the second half in just a moment. Yeah, in high school football, on that play right there, if you're falling down off a defensive back as a coach, you'd just rather him tackle the receiver and take the 15 yards instead of giving up the big play there. Yeah, had a great, great uh, half, and this is in. All right, we are back at uh, Evans High School, and you know, my apologies, we have got a speaker system right near us. You probably yeah. can hear the music, and uh, it is kind of playing some uh, havoc with us here in our, our the truck. 
Yes. Late side, there was a penalty during the half. Yeah, unsportsmanlike penalty on Evans. Uh, now Lakeside's going to be kicking off from the Evans 45. I don't know how you don't onside kick this ball. Yeah, I mean, you're at the 45 of Evans. Yeah. Why not take a shot here? Kicking it for Lakeside is number 89. That is their uh, normal place kicker. That's Reese Jenkins. See what they do. Now they're just going to do a little punch down to the goal line. It's picked up at about the six and ran back to just shy of the 20 yard line. So the Knights will start up shop there, leading at nine to seven and getting a little chippy between these two rivals here a little bit. Got to be smart as the Evans personal foul right before the half probably cost them three points. And also that player, and if I read the rule correctly, I don't think he's kicked out for the entire next game, but I think he has to sit out uh, to where he was kicked out. So I think he's going to probably miss the first half next week. So let's see what Ferguson can do, the Evans sophomore quarterback who showed us he's got an arm on that deep pass he threw in the first half. Yeah, that penalty was so costly. Even if he wasn't kicked out of the game, I don't know if Coach was putting him back in. Yeah, true. It was a, it was a biggie. And a handoff up the middle and a good gain. That is King. King had over 100 yards on just five carries in the first half. I saw on social media somebody saying, I think I would be giving the ball to King more. <laughs> Hard to argue with that 97-yard touchdown run. They just haven't had many plays. That's true. Uh, they've only had the ball for four minutes. Uh -oh. And here he breaks it to the outside, but nowhere to go. Lakeside in pursuit and able to bring him down. That was Grissom and a host of Lakeside Panthers, number 19 in there for Lakeside as well. That is Josh Young. Busby's uh, sponsoring our instant replay, and they came in and handed us some uh, uh, mouse pads. I'm assuming that's what that is. <laughs> yeah. Maybe one of those things that help you get into. May, oh, it could be. It could be that. I was going to say, it's a very small mouth of that. <laughs> and Nathan's got to keep me straight on all this stuff up here. <laughs> so they're gonna, that defense is going to hold. That's what you definitely want at three, a quick three yeah. and out to start the half. Yeah, so Evans will punt it away. Tyler Wallace, who is the place kicker, also handles the punting. And coach last night on the radio side pointed out that obviously everybody knows him as a kicker, but he's been a very good punter for us this year. Yeah, first punt of the night for Evans. They went for it on a couple of fourth yeah. downs and either scored on the other two possessions and ran out the half. And they only had five yeah, possessions. They, they only had 19 plays, as he's pointed out. So, oh, wow. This, this is a wow. Great punt. Wow. Wow is right. All the way back to the 25. What a punt by Wallace. Oh, and again, man, two teams going at it. No flags thrown, though. The Lakeside, not nearly the field position they thought they might get after that booming punt by Tyler Wallace. Yeah, 48 yards, and that was all in the air. Yeah. Yeah, Lakeside's had some decent punts, but theirs have all hit and rolled. That ball, like you said, traveled through the air. Talk about college coaches loving hang time. Yeah. So Lakeside down two. Their offense has been on the field the majority of this football game. They pitch it to Jackson, and he is going to be brought down after a very short pickup. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, again. That was number 63 for the Knights, Jack Harrington, who's played a great game up front. Yep. If you're just joining us, welcome in. Columbia County rivalry matchup here. And if you missed any portion of this game, you can catch the rebroadcast at noon on WJBF News Channel 6 on Sunday. And right up the middle goes Grissom, and he's going to be just shy of the first down. It'll set up third and one. A little surprise Lakeside hasn't gone back to the air more. They were successful very early in the game. Knight's pressure has caused some problems for them, but when they've given them time to throw, here's the problem. You just don't get the ball in Jones's hand that much. 
unless you're throwing the ball. And here's a direct snap to Thax uh, Thaxton, who's going to get the first down easily. And he's up in the midfield. Yeah. The Jones I'm talking about is Ty Jones, number five, a speed burner. And he's been really a non-factor. He had one end around for a short pickup, and that's it. Lakeside, a little bit of a hurry up offense here. Dexton going to take that direct snap again and run it. And a good job. Wow, nice play. And it's Tyler Perry, the senior, stepping up, making a nice open field tackle. Dexton is a strong runner, and if you're going to bring him down, you've got to get him around the thighs and the legs, and that's exactly what Tyler Perry there did. Yeah, I was wondering if they were going to go back to that because he had gotten about eight yards on yep. both of his carries. It's about two there. He's, he's still in there. They're going to give it to Mikkel Grissom, though, on a little counter play. Grissom's going to have the first down and then some. So they ran a little nice little counter play with Thexton getting the direct snap, handing it to the normal quarterback. And Grissom pinballs his way to a first down. And he gets up limping a little bit. Yeah, he is favoring that left ankle. He stays in the game, though. Dexton's going to get the direct snap again this time. And he's going to run. He's got some room. Good blocking up front by Lakeside, and he is inside the 20. So the Panthers are in the red zone, and a flag is down. They helmet comes flying off, and Kira's uh, saying they ripped the helmet off at the end of the play. So somebody might have got a face mask. Boy, and we said it was such a clean first half of that one big penalty on Evans. This is going to be a half the distance to the goal tacked on at the end of the play, I believe. Boy, this is a big one here. Lakeside is already moving. You don't need to help him out. No, he was, he was face mask. First no foul, face mask on the defense. First down, 17 stays, 17 stays. They're letting Thexton stay in the game. The officials start, usually if a helmet comes off, you got to come out, but since it was pulled off, he gets to stay in the football game. So that'll take it all the way inside the 10. And Lakeside will have it first and goal to go. The Murphy Auto Group red zone for the Panthers as they try to take the lead back. Thaxton, again, going to follow Grissom. Cuts back to the left, and he's going to have a touchdown, Panthers. Second touchdown run of the night for Thexton. And Coach told us about him, and the he did a little impromptu interview with Kira this week and warned me and uh, John about this young man, along with a few other players. And Thexton gets into the end zone. So the penalty is on the Panthers, but it's after the play, so it will be enforced on the kickoff. And Lakeside. That's a huge penalty, too, because they don't have the weapon on the kickoff. Yeah. You're right. Evans, Evans could be getting the ball get at midfield. Field yeah. So they will. Looks like they're going to go for two here. I don't, you know, they don't have the kicking unit on the field. They're going to go for two. Thexton and Grissom, that's been a good combination. Thexton running behind Grissom, and that's Brandon Grissom, BJ. Yeah, this would definitely tell you analytics-wise, five really doesn't help yeah. you out a whole lot. And Thexton's going to try to pound his way in there, and he does. That offense has been effective. Great little adjustment at halftime by Lakeside. And the Panthers march right down the field and take the lead back. It's 15-9 Lakeside. And we are back at Evans High School. There you see the big crowd on hand for this rivalry matchup that right now has Lakeside taking the lead back a moment ago. It's 15 to nine, and that was a very impressive drive, uh, Nathan, by the Panthers. Absolutely, they kept it on the ground there, had that really nice counter play we talked about, and then they put in uh, Thexton, really pounded the ball all the way down the goal line. Uh, got a big penalty there on the face mask. It really helped him out on Evans. And credit not just the Lakeside offensive line, also credit B.J. Grissom. He's usually the runner, but he was doing a great job as the lead blocker for Thexton on that possession. So good job by him. So Evans will get it back. They will try to answer back and forth games so far. 
15 to nine, Lakeside on top. They're trying to knock off their rivals in a big region clash. Evans trying to go two and zero in region play. The penalty is going to have Lakeside kicking all the way back at their 25. Yeah. Every time Lakeside's kicked off an eye, it's been from a different spot. Yeah. So Evans, their return men are all the way up at about the 32 to 35. So they should get really good field position. Nothing like high school football and great atmosphere here tonight with a big crowd on hand. Both these schools get great support. And here's the kick. It is a short pooch kick. Evans oh. is, oh, and they touched it, lost the football, but they do recover. So Evans is going to have very good field position. Nice job getting on the ball there. That's Williams. Now, Williams, what an up and down game. He fumbled the punt that set up Lakeside's first score, but then he made the incredible catch to set up the field goal, and he gets the recovery there. He has three catches in the first half, so he's had a really solid game. So here we go, the Knights have it first and 10. Let's see if they can get something going. And they're going to throw it on first down. Ferguson looking downfield, throws it. It's got a man. Oh, and it's caught. Ball comes out. It's picked up by Lakeside. Did they call it a catch? Yes. yes. It is going to be Panther football. That is Velez, who has played a great game tonight. Johnny on the spot recovering the fumble. Let's see this. Ferguson throws the ball. He had a man open. Good. Who made the hit? Oh, beautiful hit. And I'm not sure who that was that made the hit. Oh, what a play. What a tackle. Forces the fumble, and Lakeside gets it right back. And, oh, man, the turnovers. Yeah, that's one of those, depending on which team you're pulling for, you're going to think it was a catch, and the other yeah. side's going to think it wasn't a catch. For sure. You're right about that one. So, Lakeside gets it back. All the momentum swinging to the Panthers. Still plenty of time left in this one midway through the third quarter. And they're going to leave Thexton in there running behind Grissom, but he's not going anywhere this time. They stop him for about a half yard gain. They're going to give him a yard, so it'll be second and nine. Nothing fancy with Lakeside, what they're doing right now, but it's working. You see that Lakeside or the Evans defense, and they need to stop here. They've got to change this, switch this momentum around. Grissom is going to come back in at quarterback. Caleb Jackson will be the halfback. Thexton goes back to his H-back position, tight end. Second down. And they give it to Jackson. He's going to be brought down from behind. I tell you, man, this kid is playing a heck of a game for the Evans Knights. That is 63, Jack Harrington. He has been all over the place. If the Knights pull this one out, he is an early candidate for the defensive player of the game for sure. That quickness. He came from all the way over, Nathan, on the other side of the field from defensive end to make that play. Got to love the effort. Yeah. Great pursuit. So here, third down and five. And they're going to fake it to the running back. And, and again, it was Harrington making the tackle this time. The ball carrier is Grissom. He's going to be four yards short. So, so fourth down and four. And they're going to punt it away. And I think that's Howard going back for Evans, I believe, number 21. That is Jeremy Howard. He's a very talented 10th grader. So the snap is good. The punt is pretty good one this time. And fair catch made by Howard. So Evans will have the ball at the 22-yard line. Jeremy Howard, right at the 23-yard line. It's going to be a push down for the Knights. Okay, we have a First down for Evans. There's a timeout on the field. And a timeout on the field, and I think 
I thought with John gone, I was going to dodge this, but Nathan, I believe you've set me up with yeah. a trivia question. Yeah, we got a little trivia question for you. I don't know how difficult it's going to be for you. But oh, Lord. Let's see here. Well, Kira's broken my spirits. Yeah. All my confidence I have. Yeah, so what Lakeside coach – <laughs> so what Lakeside coach has the best winning percentage against Evans, and what was their record? Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Ray Shaw King on the carry. Gain a five on the play. He's out to the 27 yard line. He's out to the 28 yard line. Yeah, that question's not as easy as you think. Because you got to go back. I know the two stretches where they were good. Nothing will make John happier than, than if, if he I comes this back one. and I stumped you on a trip. Yeah, this is a tough one. And Evanson on their first play. Oh, and drug down. That was Grissom, B.J. Grissom on the tackle. The Evans coaches wanted a flag, but... They say no horse collar. So third down for the Knights in about five. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, we've got another young man in there at quarterback for Evans. Yeah, so they brought in, it might be Chancey, number six. And he's going to scramble. He's got some room along the left side up across the 30. And that is Chansey, Mark Owen Chansey. I think he may be a yard short. So Mark Owen Chansey. I don't know if you can go for this. I think you got to punt this football. Oh, man, this is a tough one. Yeah. I, I think they're going for it. Lakeside's offense hasn't been real explosive tonight, so you, I wouldn't help them with a short field. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna at least line up and try to draw them off sides if nothing else. They're fourth down and one, but in their own territory, the Knights. See if they try to draw them off sides. No, they're gonna go for it, and they're gonna get the first down easily. And a nice run by Mims. Tony Jones or Ty Jones made the tackle, but again, not before Mims gets out of bounds with the first down. Ooh, gutsy call. Yeah, gutsy call deep in their own territory, uh, just across the 30. Ty Jones made the tackle, but not before they pick up nice yardage. So the Knights all the way out now across the 40 to the 42. Yeah, I was remnant of, of week one with yeah. Youngblood going for it yeah. deep in his own territory. Yeah. We've seen a lot of coaches doing that, some gutsy calls. And so Evans runs it again, this time about a three yard pickup up to the 45. Men's on the Approaching the three minute mark here of the third quarter. We've had a great season thus yeah. far, and we still got a long way to go. Some of, some of that from the Evans side could have been our defense has been on the field so long, we just can't punt this football back. Yeah. Got to try and keep them off the field a little bit. Well, second and seven. Mims is in there, and he's going to take the direct snap. And he's going to run it. Got a pulling guard in front of him, and he's going to get up you know, just shy of the 45 to the 40, or just shy of the 50, excuse me, to the 49. So third and three for the Knights here as Rayshon King checks into the game. Mims a good-looking young back as well for the Knights. He is... Mims, number 22, senior running back, back up to Rayshon King, who takes the direct snap here. King cuts it up, and he is going to get up to the 45 of Lakeside. It's a first down for the Knights. These two teams, if you haven't noticed, folks, are pretty, pretty even. This is a, this is a good matchup. It's whoever makes the least amount of mistakes is probably going to come away with the win here. And right now, like uh, Evans is on the move here. And right back to the line of scrimmage. Not much else that time on first down. King coming off a 156-yard effort last week. 
He's well over 100 yards this week as well. 97 of that, though, came on one play. We've had a couple of arguments for play of the play of the game. Hard to beat a 97-yard touchdown run. Yeah, you get a couple of those in a year, and it really helps the guards per carry. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So let's see what the Knights do here. Keep this possession going. It's second and nine. And they're going to run it with Mims, and he's got nowhere to go up the middle. He might have got a yard. Ball comes out at the end of the play, but the play was whistled dead. By the way, we did Aquinas uh, last week, and their pass rusher, the freshman, Jaden Worth, it's worth mentioning that he is leading the state all classifications in sacks. Wow. Ninth grader. Somebody to watch for sure. Aquinas in a big one tonight with Lincoln County. You can get that highlights and score later tonight on Football Friday night as we are closing in on the end of the third quarter here. So you're saying if you're an Aquinas student, you'll get to see every big name coach in your school in the next year. I would think so. Uh, would you throw him in there, Buddy Rowe Guerrero, Makai Quiller. They've got some good young players over there. Maybe a helicopter or two landing in that new facility. Yeah, I would think so. They ought to just put a helipad in there, man. <laughs> and that's what, you know what? Get JBF to fly us into the games. That sounds like a plan. And, folks, don't forget, if you have missed any of tonight's action, you can catch all of it Sunday at noon with the rebroadcast of tonight's matchup uh, between Evans and Lakeside. And that will get you really reared up and ready to go for all your Sunday football action. Again, noon on WJBF, the rebroadcast of Game Night Live tonight. You going to the air here, A.B., or are you just going to try and stick with the run and kind of cut it in half, get the fourth down? I think, you, I, you know, I think if Harrington's on the field, they probably go through the air, but he's not. So my guess is they're probably going to run it with King. And yeah, with Harrington not in there. Now, it would be, it would throw Lakeside for a loop if you roll King out and let him throw it. They would be surprised, give him a run, run throw option. But they might be thinking it's four down territory, and if we get four or five here, actually it's going to be Chansey, so they will throw it. I thought it was going to be a direct snap. And Chansey's going to get up across the 45 to the 44, but that's about it. So it will be fourth down. So got back in the line of scrimmage, and that's about it for Mark Owen Chansey, who was in there at quarterback. Sometimes it's tough when you're trying to find your starting guy and you're playing a lot of different guys because they're always pressing trying to not come out of the game and not lose their spot, you know? Yeah, and I think, I think Evans is going to take this to the fourth quarter, give yep. them a little extra time to decide what they want to do here. All right. Well, that is going to do it for the third quarter. Evans took, had the lead at halftime, but Lakeside takes it back with a third quarter touchdown run from Jack Thexton. It is 15 to 15-9, Panthers back for the fourth quarter of game night five. We are back at Evans High School where the Knights trail Lakeside 15 to nine as we start the fourth quarter. Ashley Brown, Nathan Edwards, Kira Goldstein, and the entire WJBF crew doing a fantastic job as always. And the Knights have decided they're gonna punt this one away. So they are gonna punt it and try to pin Lakeside back. Yeah, I think if they'd have gotten anything on that third You're round, right. they yeah. probably would have gone for it. You're right. And they do have a weapon at punter, obviously, in Tyler Wallace. And He's going to punt a low liner, but it's going to take a great bounce. And they will pin Lakeside all the way back at close to the five-yard line. So it'll be first down for Lakeside. They've got 95 yards to go to get to the end zone after a nice punt by Wallace, his second solid punt of the game. Yeah, we'll go ahead and get in the QBs by the quarter for Let's the third it. quarter. So uh, Grissom is still four of seven passing for the 27 yards and an interception, and he's added 60 yards on the ground so far. Uh, and then Ferguson is still is four of seven for 73 yards. That's your QBs by the quarter, brought to you by Culpepper Lumber Ace Hardware in Evans. And the Knights defense needs to make a play here. They can't let Lakeside get a long drive and get points. That would be really tough at the way this game has gone. And looks like Ty Jones is in the backfield to get the direct snap. He's the speed burner we talked about. 
And he gets to the outside and is going to pick up nice yardage on first down. Yeah, we talked about this a little bit before the game. Uh, me and you were just chatting. Is got to figure out ways to get the ball in his hands. Yeah, he's so dynamic with his speed and quickness. He is, again, he's a young man that was a wide receiver over at Greenbrier for the last couple of years. He's going to be a fine addition to the Lakeside basketball team, too. So they got seven out of that from Jones. He's going to take it again, same play. Cuts this one up the middle, and he's going to have the first down, I believe. He will. Actually, was that Grissom? That might have been Grissom who took that one. Can't tell who's at the bottom of the pile. No, it's Jones. It was Jones again, so Grissom was doing the blocking. Well, Ty Jones with a couple of nice carries as they went with the power back in Thexton, and now they've come with the speed guy in Jones, Nathan. Yeah, absolutely. So first and 10, Lakeside. Giving them a little breathing room with those runs. Yeah, you're talking about basketball season. If you if you want to know how big this rivalry is, go to basketball season and listen to the chants about football. <laughs> I know, I know. Oh man. Just like football. <laughs> <laughs> so a timeout on the field on Lakeside. We're gonna keep it here. As a matter of fact, let's check in with Kira Goldstein because Boy, Coach Hibbett's had some choice words for me and John, John Hart this week. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, he really called you out, didn't he? He talked about how much you love to collect uh, cards, baseball cards, football cards, and he was very quick to tell you that you're going to have some cards in the future, A.B., that are some Lakeside guys. He mentioned Jack Dexton. He mentioned uh, Mikhail Grissom. He said, you know, Lakeside's got some of the best players in the world. And then he really called out John Hart. He said that John was one day going to be handing out a Player of the Year award to one Mr. Ty Jones. He said, you know, these guys, the Panthers are going to come out on top. They're really strong. Whoever picked us to lose tonight, they're wrong. So we'll see about that, won't we, Andy? Oh, man. I, I got to remind him, I said coin flip. That means I don't know. It's close. But, uh, yeah, I love him. Coach Hibbett's a great, great guy, and I love his approach with these, with this team and what he does. And right now they've got themselves a lead and the football. And it's going to be Grissom to hand it off to B.J. Grissom, and B.J. is going to get it all the way out to the 25-yard line. So eight yards. Lakeside's ground game has been really solid pretty much the entire game, but especially – in this second half, they're wearing that Knights defense down that's been on the field almost the entire game, Nathan. Absolutely. And uh, we got 180 yards rushing now at his lakeside. Oh, what a fake. B.J. Grissom faked out the middle linebacker. Unable to stay on his feet, though, but he does get across the 40. It's another lakeside first down. Watch this fake. Watch the step right there. Oh, man. He made the uh, either the safety of the linebacker who came up made him fall down and was able to pick up nice yardage. So Caleb Jackson checks in at running back. They have moved people in and out of that quarterback and running back spot throughout the night. This is going to be Mikhail Grissom, and Grissom is going to pick up some yardage, but I believe we're going to have a flag, and it's in the area. I don't, I don't know was it? they called it. It looked like a face mask, but I don't, yeah. I don't, maybe they didn't get it. So it looked like maybe a face mask. No call, though, and it's going to be a short pickup of about two yards, so it'll be second and eight. Remember, this drive started all the way back at the lakeside five-yard line. Yeah, they have moved it out to the 40. Oh, yeah, Hibbets would love nothing more than about an eight-minute drive down the field. Oh, there. yeah. Yeah, you get an eight-minute drive down the field, this ball game is over. Yeah. Especially, I mean, if you come away with points. And they're going to hand it off up the middle. Nowhere to go that time. Knight's defense stiffens up. And it's going to set up third and long here. That's a yard line, two. That was Caleb Jackson. It's going to be third down and six. Now they give him two, so it's going to be third and a little shorter than I thought. I thought it'd be seven or eight. It's going to be third and six. This is a big play in the football game here, third and six. Do they go back to that misdirection run? I don't think it's a bad idea. Now, I are, you, could, you could try to throw a pass. They haven't thrown much since that early part of the game. They're going to throw it here, though. They get it to Jones out in the flats. He's going to try to get the first down. He's going to be close, but I think he's going to be just short. Let's see where they spot him out of bounds. No, they're going to mark him out well short. So they're going to spot him down about 
three now, yard shy maybe or two yard shy. Let's see. We, we, we've seen some gutsy calls uh, to kind of go for it, but I really think Hibbets punts. I really think he trusts his defense right now. Yeah. If they would have given him another yard or two, I think maybe you go. But that's three yards. That's a that's a long way. They're going to punt it away. Yeah, because I think you take out those big plays. That's why he's yeah. so confident at the half that he really is believing his defense is playing a good yeah, football game. Yeah, they're just showing a lot of confidence in him for sure. And the punt is going to be a – it's going to take a nice bounce, and it's going to be down inside the 20 to about the 19. And we will take a timeout here. We are back with the final 8-10 in this one, so stick around. we got a good one brewing here at Evans. We welcome everybody back in. If you are just tuning in, we've got ourselves a good ball game between two rivals in Columbia County, Lakeside and Evans. Evans coming off a big win over Grotown, trying to go 2-0 in region play, but Lakeside trying to get over 500. They're 2-2 two two on the season. And right now they lead it 15-9. And we've got Hogan back in at quarterback for Evans. And he's got Rayshon King out wide, but he's going to run it. Hogan is going to pick up nice yardage before he's brought down from behind by Young. And nice pickup there by Hogan. So he picks up seven on first down, and boy, the Knights. Lakeside's defense pretty fresh because they haven't been on the field a lot. But Evans needs a drive here. Down six, seven and a half to go. Hogan got Rayshon King behind him, and he hands it to him. King nowhere to go. There's the big fella. That is Justin Barnes, one of the better defensive linemen in the area. Super quick and makes a play there. So they lose two on the play. It's going to be third and four. I mean, you got to get it here, Nathan. This is, yeah. I mean, there's not a lot of time left. Yeah, you, clock running. I wouldn't be shocked if they went for this, if they got it to within a yard or two. Yeah. Well, they've got, looks like Ferguson back in at quarterback. He's the young lefty that can throw it. See what they do. Third and four. They're going to roll him out. He's looking downfield. Throws. Got a man. It's caught. It's, oh, no. I thought he dropped it, but he did hold on. It's a first down for the Knights. That was very close in traffic. Lakeside's defense was all over that because they've run that same play about yeah. four times on that rollout. Tyler Perry able to hang on in traffic. That is a big, big conversion on third down and six. Watch him. He threw it into traffic. But, man, Tyler Perry made a play on the ball and was able to hang on for the first down. Excellent work there. Here's Hogan, Hogan up the middle. And the pile is going to move, and they're going to get a, about four maybe out of that. So clock now approaching six minutes. The Knights trying to drive down. They've won some thrillers this year, Nathan. They were down 21 to 10 to Greenbrier and came back and won that game 22 to 21 in the closing minutes. We've had some thrillers this year as well. We have. We've had a lot of tight ball games. Burke County with a 14-12 win. We had that Laney Hepps of a game was tight. Midland Valley, Harlem was back and forth. That, that Aquinas Greenbrier Aquinas game Aquinas Greenbrier was tight. Yeah, that was tight. And Ferguson's going to throw. Looking downfield. Got a man. It's caught. That is Williams, who's having himself a night. Had three catches in the first half. That's his fourth of the ball game. Well, no doubt Ferguson's found his favorite target. And King in there at running back, Ferguson at quarterback. They're on the move are the Knights. Maybe their best looking drive they've had of the night. They've had the big plays, but here's King trying to get to the outside and he's going to go out of bounds. Down to the 42, four yard pickup. Just bringing a little bit of balance to, to the offense. Yeah. I mean, they don't need to throw for 200, 250 yards a game. They just need to be yeah. able to throw for 100. Make Lakeside know you're not afraid to throw it. Exactly. Keep them honest. And then, bang, you hit a big play with, with King that way on the ground. And they 
give it to King. Up the middle, King with good yardage, spinning his way. He is going to be close to the first down. See what they call it. It's a, it's a first down for the Knights. Yeah, and we're going to, after that first down, we'll see if we can sneak in the trivia question answer here, maybe right after right. this play, A.B., so get ready. All right. <laughs> I got an answer. I just I think it's good. We'll see. I don't know the record. I do know the I think I know the coach. And here we go. They hand it off. This is Jeremy Howard around the end. He's had an effect on this game, but not running the ball out of the backfield yet, and that's a nice run. He picks up about eight or nine. All right. Well, they're, uh, Knights are hurrying up here. They don't want you to have to answer the trivia question. Hey, thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're trying to get up and run quick here on this second and one play. I'd like it taking a shot here, maybe. They're going to run it, though. And they're going to get the first down and then some. It's going to be a touchdown. Jeremy Howard, 27 yards. Knights tie it up. The Knights have tied it up. Jeremy Howard, 27-yard run. Great blocking and a good cutback. And the Knights tie this thing up, and we await the extra point from Tyler Wallace to give Evans the lead. The holder is Chancey. Wallace to kick. And this would get Evan, give Evans the one-point lead here with just 3.47 to go. I said go for a big play. Well, they ran it. Wallace's kick is up. The kick is good. The Knights lead it 16 to 15. We'll be back with the final 347 in just a moment. Back to John Pierce Blanchard Memorial Stadium here on the campus of Evans High School where the Knights have just punched it in on a 27-yard touchdown run from Jeremy Howe. Absolutely. Uh, definitely a best drive of the night for the Knights. Easily, uh, yeah. Definitely have taken the lead. So we'll see if we can sneak the trivia question in here while we're waiting for them to kick this football off. What Lakeside coach has the best winning percentage against Evans, and what was the record? I'm The, the coach, I think, is Jody Grooms. The record, I'm not sure how many. I'm going to go – I don't know how many years he was there. I'm going to go three and one, three and one, four and one, three and one. But I think it's Jody Groom. It was Troxler 3-1. It was Troxler. Oh, man. And I thought about I'm him, and I thought he was the offensive coordinator yeah, when, he, when they yeah, were I'm taking it. that as the win. No, that's that, a, was that's, the, that was the more important That's a win part. for you, yeah. yeah. I knew the record, but yeah. I couldn't remember who the yeah. coach so was. Yeah, that's right. You had Chris Lip, then you had Randy Hill, yep. then you had Grooms for a while, you had Troxler. Well, you also had, yeah, don't his, forget, you had uh, all the kid. His, his, his co son was the quarterback. Um, oh, gosh, what was his name? He was only here a shorter period of time, but his son was his son went and played at Western Kentucky. Yeah. A good quarterback. He was yep. there before Grooms. Well, there, are, there were a couple of years there after Chris that were Evans and Lakes. I didn't play each other because they weren't in yeah. the same region. That didn't make anybody happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Trox was going to crush me if he hears yeah. that. I, I so my wish, guy. He's my I guy. so wish he was watching. He is my guy. And I was thinking he was the offensive coordinator during that stretch. I knew he took over yeah, afterwards. That's, that's why I thought it was going to be easy because – Oh, and I love – and he's my guy, man. I, I blew that one. Because remember, he left. He went to Greenbrier. And then now he's he's coaching at one of the premier yeah. high schools in the yeah. country. Yeah, he was he was 3-1 and one, mm -hmm. um, against Evans, and his only loss was that 2013 Max Prep rivalry game. game was, that's out. right, yep. I had Hunter Banks on that quarterback for Lakeside. And I think Marty Jackson was at Evans at that Marty time. Marty Jackson was in all of the matchups. Yeah. Since. So here we go, Lakeside trails by one. Let's see what they do. They pitch it out, and it's going to be B.J. Grissom cutting up the middle, and he's going to get across the 25 to the 26. It'll be second down and five. Plenty of time left, but Lakeside, the problem is, if the graphic is correct, they've only got one timeout left. Yes, that's what I have them for as well. Yeah, Evans has all three of theirs. So Lakeside's got to be very judicious with the time here. It's going to be Mikhail Grissom up the middle. Grissom stopped at the 30. He's going to have a first down. What a game. 16-15, two rivals, closing minutes. 
Lakeside 70 yards away or possibly less if they kick a field goal. It's a one point affair last year. Could yeah. be a one point affair again this year. And Evans beat Greenbrier by one. A lot of close games this yeah. year. Can you imagine beating your two county rivals by one point? Well, they did blow out, uh, to be fair, they did blow out Grovetown 29-7. That's not as big a rival as Greenbrier and Lakeside, though. Pass across the middle. It's caught. No, it's dropped by Jones. Jones, I thought at first he thought he was uh, interfered with. I think he was mad at himself for dropping that one. I tell you what, great coverage by Harden. He's been solid tonight in the secondary. He was all over that play. So second down and 10. The incomplete pass, though, does stop the clock. And up the middle, and yeah, this is going to be a nice run up the middle. It's, they're going to call him down back at the 35. Up to the 36-yard line. Make it the 36. Third down and four. Here we go. And this time Evans with a great defensive stance. Jacob Jackson in there making the play along with number 15, Elijah Bradley. So Lakeside takes their final timeout. So this is going to be the ball game right here. Yeah, this is it. Lakeside doesn't get his first down. Evans is just going to run out the clock. So you got you got a one call here for the game, A.B. So what are you doing here? Man, I, I think you roll out. I think you got to roll out Grissom and, and let him let him maybe run. Roll him out, but give him a threat of the pass, but then let him run the football. That would be what I would do. I think that's what they do for sure, but. They'd love to figure out a way to get the ball in number five's hands as well. Here we go, big play. Ball game right here. And he's going to throw, and he's going to look deep downfield, and it's overthrown, and no flag is down. It's incomplete. And the Knights will get the ball back with 2.06, and Lakeside has no timeouts left. Or I checked that. They did hold the one timeout. No, they so used it right there. Down. They used it right there before yeah. fourth down. Okay, so they did use it. So no timeouts for Lakeside. Evans can milk this clock and run this clock out and win this football game. What a game. Yeah, they're going to. They're going to wish they had probably thrown that ball to Ty Jones yeah. uh, because if they would have, they probably would have gotten a call because he was held. But since they didn't throw the ball near him, they didn't get the call. Yeah. The Knights trying to squeak one out here against their rivals. This would put them at 2-0 and in the region. As long as their defense was on the field, if they're able to squeak this game out, what a win it would be. And Lakeside has nothing to hang their heads about. They played a great football game. This was a good matchup on both sides. And yeah, Evans is in the new victory formation. <laughs> We're getting a, you're getting a shotgun now. And Ferguson catches the snap and takes a knee. And Evans is just gonna let this clock run. Yeah, gonna be a heartbreaking loss for Hibbets and Lakeside team. Yeah. Well, it's tough. You feel for them because they, you know, you feel for any time. I would rather get blown out than lose a close game. Oh, I, I, those crush me. Yeah, absolutely. Because players talk about it when you get blown out. You just throw the tape away. You yeah. Kind of get rid of it. Yeah, you're going to have bad nights. When you have a close one, a chance to win. And Tony Jones came, or Ty Jones came flying in there trying to make a play. Clock is going to run all the way down. They they could snap this one with about 40 seconds left. Which 
means this ball game is all but over, folks. There you see it. I said about 40. Look at this. How about this clock management? They snap it with exactly 40. And Walk now that is going to do it. The Knights are going to get the victory. Huge region win for Evans. Such a clutch drive they put together when they had to have it. Yeah. And you got to give them credit because their defense was on the field for a majority of this football game. And somehow they mixed a few big plays in that one great drive, and they're able to get it done with a 16 to 15 victory over the Rivals. Yeah, I got to give credit to Ferguson. He hadn't thrown the ball for a ton of yards all night, but a couple of huge throws yeah. on that drive. Yeah, a couple of big ones. And of course, the big plays in the first half. And hey, Tyler Wallace. Think about Tyler Wallace with the field goal. That was big. And you thought maybe the penalty before the half might hurt him. Luckily for Evans, it doesn't come back to haunt him. And we are we're going to go down on the field to Kira Goldstein. Kira. Yeah, guys, I have the winning coach here. Coach, talk to me about your offensive performance tonight. Well, they, they had a good defensive game plan and still made us his back and forth game. And we just made one more play at the end. It really came down to getting a stop defensively. We had to punt late because our defense was playing well and we got a stop and scored. So just really proud of our guys. A big sigh when I grabbed you. What did you learn about the resilience of your team tonight? Well, we came out, our guys wasn't worried about all the hoop line stuff. Our guys are focused on our guys. We weren't out there doing stuff on the sides and, and hooting and hollering and doing all the crazy stuff. Our guys are locked in on the game. They had a good they got a good team. Could have went either way, but luckily we're one point ahead. So we're gonna take that victory and go to two and oh and first in the region. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for the time, Coach. We appreciate it. Appreciate we'll be right back. And there you see the victorious Evans Knights getting some instructions from their staff as they come away with the big one point win, 16 to 15 over Lakeside. Let's get our Culpepper Lumber Ace Hardware QBs by the quarter. Yeah, Grissom for Lakeside was five of 10 for 30 yards interception. Had some really early success throwing the football. It wasn't able to keep it going. Uh, 15 attempts and 66 yards on the ground. And then Ferguson, Ferguson for Evans, two couple of huge passes on that last drive. Six of nine for 109 yards. All right, there you go, our QBs by the quarter. Now let's go down to the field. Some hardware for our McDonald's offensive and defensive players of the game. Kira? Yeah, guys, I'm down here with our guys. First, we're going to start with the offensive player of the game. That's Rayshon King. Now, you had a 97-yard touchdown return. Talk to me about what was going through your head and what that moment was like for you. You know, I feel like uh, we just we, we needed a big play. You know, I just feel like I was the man to do that. Um, I've, been, I've been working out all week, and it was, it was just practice, so it just, it just came to me normally. There were many moments through this game when you guys were down and you guys needed to pull together as a team. What did you learn about your offense tonight? Um, I learned that we can uh, fight. That's one thing we can we we know how to fight. We know how to fight, but um, it's a great win. Uh, you know, it's just a hard fight with my brothers, and we've been waiting a year. We waiting a whole year since to get this win. So, big win. Big fight. Thank you so much. We're gonna have some hardware for you, and then we're gonna make our way over to our defensive player of the game. That's gonna be Jack Harrington. Jack, the defense tonight really stepped up. What was that like for you as part of that defense, and what did you learn about your team tonight? It was it was really great. Like like seeing my team like step up like that. Like. We came out a little soft, and we really just stepped out. I really like that, and um, we're going to get back to it next week. You guys battle back. Coach told me that you guys have really fought all season to come together as a team and get wins like this, that it all comes down to moments like this. What is that like for you to be to be part of such a dominant event? It's honestly great. Like, like thank you to my coach and all of them. Like, they really put me in this position. It's like, it's like it's really happening now. I really like it. It's fun. All right, thanks guys. Both very, very well deserved. We're going to send it back up to John and AB, and then we're going to hand out some hardware to these guys. All right, thanks a lot, Kira. We appreciate that. Our offensive and defensive players of the game for McDonald's, Rayshon King on the offensive side, over 120 yards, and that long 97-yard touchdown, and Jack Harrington all over the field on defense as the Knights improve to, uh, what are they now, 3-2 and 2-0 and two and oh in region play, and they've played. Coach reminded me, Nathan, they've played a brutally tough schedule. Burke County, Strom Thurmond, 
North Augusta, they've played some tough teams, so th th they planned it that way to get ready for region. Yeah, it reminds us a little bit about Coach Strzok, so we talked about earlier. He believed in playing as tough a region yeah. schedule, non-region schedule as you could to get your team ready to play. Yeah, those games don't really matter in the grand scheme of things in terms of uh, playoffs, so big, uh, big uh, uh, win there for the Knights. All right, let's get to our Georgia Health Department, or excuse me, we're going to go to our Power 8 play of the game. And I got a feeling, I, I got, know what I this one's going to be. It's 97 yards. It's Rayshon King, the D1 prospect at running back, and nobody was going to catch him when he broke through. He was over at the 15-yard line. <laughs> Big-time play, and big-time players make those kind of plays, and that was a huge one for Evans. And now let's get our uh, Georgia Health Department hit of the game. Let's see what we got for that one because most games we've got, like, Five, six tough ones to choose from tonight. We didn't have quite as many. Let's see what they went with. Here we go. Oh, it was the big fumble. Yeah, this was a big hit. Yeah. Let's see if we can. Oh, that was a huge hit. It caused the fumble that Velez was able to get on top of. So that was your uh, hit of the game by the Georgia Health Department. And we appreciate their support of high school football in the area. Well, Nathan, Evans gets the victory. They're 2-0 and in region play. And next week, this is a special, we're talking about rivalry games. People that know Evans' history, next week, Effingham County coming to town. That is a monumental game in Evans' history because in 1987, that was the game where Evans was 13-0 after beating Effingham County. They were deemed to have used illegal equipment, a receiver in the quarterback's head, uh, helmet, uh, and they were forced to forfeit that game. Effingham County got to move on in advance in the state playoffs to play Morrow in the state semifinals, and Evans' 13-0 season was over. Uh, that story made the rounds on 60 Minutes, 2020. It was a big deal. A coach lost his job in a crazy situation. Big story here. So that's always in the back of my mind when Evergreen County plays Evans. Absolutely, and and they don't have to play them, thankfully, next week. They do get a bye week to get a little chance to rest yeah. up. So uh, come – Come down from this win over your rival, uh, get a chance to clean up some things, continue to work on that passing game. They're going to need a little bit more out of that as they continue to go through region play uh, because they're definitely they're looking for trying to get a home field it, uh, game during the playoffs. I mean, that's what you're really aiming for during region play is you want to be at home in that first round of the playoffs. Well, absolutely. and uh, But they're off to the, – that's what you want. You want that 2-0 start. Forget the non-region games. You're 2-0 now. I don't care how close they are. You don't have to pencil in the score. You got the win. That's all that matters. So big, big victory for the Knights. Uh, and, of course, I want to thank the entire WJBF crew. With John out tonight, they made it easy on us, and we appreciate all of them. Kyle Thomas, uh, Ben Price, Josh Recor, uh, Jeff Singleton, Katron uh, Hugey, also uh, Kat Kingery, uh, Jake Arnold, Gary Nipple, Krishana Roebuck, also Adam Karstens was our red cap tonight, Philip Scott, Jarrett Ledger, Lauren Fitzgerald, and Helen Johnson. And, of course, I couldn't do it without our partner here, Nathan Edwards, and down on the field, Kira Goldstein doing an excellent job, as always. Uh, like I said, the crew makes us look good, and we appreciate all their hard work bringing you the sights and sounds of high school football. Yep. So if you're lakeside, you try and – uh, shake this loss off. Uh, you got Brunswick next week at home. You got three home games coming up in a row, so hopefully you can get on a little run in region play as well. And if you're us, what do we got coming up next week? Do we have? Is it? Is it the big? It's the big one. It's the yeah. Highway 378 yeah. War, as we've got Washington Wilkes and Lincoln County. Don't know that Lincoln County final to Quantas yet, but. That's going to be a good one. Two well-coached, quality football teams. It's a good matchup every year. Yeah, if you want to watch a hard-hitting football game, that one yeah. always delivers. And don't try to go and do anything in the towns because they're shut down for that game. Both, both towns are completely shut down uh, for, those, uh, for those football games. That's going to do it from here at Evans. We appreciate you watching. You can catch the rebroadcast at noon on WJBF. From all of us here at WJBF, have a great night, folks. Thank you.